Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the craziness going on around the ACC in Florida State. ESPN has just jumped into the mix up there, which creates a lot of unanswered questions, but hopefully we are on the way to some answers there. But let's jump into the combine because tons of stuff going on this week. We had D linemen and linebackers report yesterday. So I thought today would be a great day to break down some of the different guys I thought that would be worth watching throughout this combine process that I think could light the world on fire this week. And we'll start with one guy that pretty much everyone knows and then one guy that you might not be quite as familiar with uh, at each position. But we'll start with defensive end and Jared Verse, uh, an absolute beast. He had two uh, nine-sack seasons while with uh, the Florida State Seminoles is a wildly athletic dude. He, I think he's going to test totally off the charts, and I think one of the interesting things with him and really all of the defensive ends in this class is it seems like he is fighting with Dallas Turner and Liatu Latu for that top spot, uh, that top defensive end spot, which, as we know in past years, has been able to go in the top 10 while the other two might fall out of the top 10. And while that doesn't seem like a big deal, there is a difference in the amount of money that is going to be made off the bat um, from those two positions. So I think all three of those guys are going to be very interesting to watch throughout the week. Um, but I think Jared Verse is particularly interesting because, first of all, his physical ability is just off the charts incredible. But also, he went through a very interesting year a year ago, right? Uh, all these Florida State players that show up to this combine and have interviews, whether you're Jared Verse or Trey Benson or Jordan Travis, you're going to have a lot of questions about the year that just happened to you. Um, the going 13-0 and getting left out of the playoff. How did you deal with that? How did you you know, come to terms with that? And how did you kind of bounce back? And all of those different things. Uh, you know, what happened in the Orange Bowl? Uh, obviously, Jared Verse didn't play in that game, but maybe they'll ask a question about that. So these interviews for particularly the Florida State players, I think, uh, are going to be very, very important because it's going to show a lot of NFL teams just how did they respond um, to getting left out of the playoff. We know that there were a lot of players that handled themselves actually really remarkably well. Jordan Travis uh, may be chief among them, but you don't really know until you get into a room with someone and get to actually look them in the face and, and pick their brain about that situation. So I think those interviews are going to be super important. I think this guy is going to test absolutely off the charts, so I don't think that will be remotely a problem for him. Um, but he's currently, according to NFL Network's uh, Daniel Jeremiah, currently sitting r right around the 12th overall pick to the Broncos. Um, but again, very much up in the air because I believe he had number eight. I believe he had uh, Dallas Turner going to the Falcons, if I'm not mistaken there. Um, but basically, he had tons of other defensive ends right around that area. So there's a lot of different jockeying for position that's going to go on this week. And I think Jared Verse has all the ability in the world um, and will have a lot of very interesting interviews to pull from um, depending on you know if he's defensive end one or defensive end three. I think any of those guys could go in any number of those orders. So It'll be very interesting to see what he comes out of this week looking like. Um, but another defensive end that might be a little bit off your radar, although a very, very talented guy, is Darius Robinson from Missouri. Uh, he's probably sitting somewhere in the second round, although Daniel Jeremiah does have him uh, 27th overall. So tons of things can happen for him. Obviously, there is a huge difference between going day one and having to wait another day or having to wait into the weekend. So... Um, he's definitely someone to keep your eye on this week. He had 43 tackles and eight and a half sacks a year ago. Super productive, super disruptive while at Missouri. Um, and obviously got to uh, learn from Kevin Peoples, which is a huge help at the next level because one of the better developers in all of the country. Um, but as I talked about with the, this defensive end class yesterday is this is one of the deepest classes I've seen in a really long time at that position. There are so many guys that could have an immediate effect on a team, and Darius Robinson is one of them. But at the end of the day, I don't know where he falls in this you know, craziness that is the defensive end class. Um, but the defensive end class is a lot like the quarterback class in some ways where you have the three guys up top fighting. We talked about Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, and Liatu Latu. All of those guys are fighting for the three top spots. I think it'd be very, very hard for someone else to jump into that. The same way it'd be really hard for a quarterback to jump into the top three 
that are currently set. But that four position is wide open. Um, the same way it is in quarterbacks. That four position can still be decided in a number of ways. So maybe that's Darius Robinson. Maybe that's someone totally different. But he has every ability to jump into that role. Excuse me. Um, he has every ability to jump into that role. And there are tons of people that can do that, obviously. But I really do like this kid. I think um, his athletic ability is a little bit above the second tier of defensive ends, if you will, in this class. So I think he's someone definitely to watch throughout um, this week and it, throughout the entire draft process to see if he can kind of raise his uh, his draft stock a little bit here. Um, but let's get into defensive tackles. Those are the the big fun guys in the middle that everyone loves to talk about. But um, let's start with the guy that is kind of setting the pace for defensive tackles in this draft in Byron Murphy from Texas. Um, him and Tavondre Sweat were a remarkable duo last year. Tavondre Sweat was actually the more productive of the two, uh, won the Outland Trophy. But at the end of the day, when you look at uh, Byron Murphy's athletic ability on the inside, it just jumps off the page. Uh, it's impossible to overlook what he's capable of doing at, I think, 340 pounds. Um, and I think one of the big things for him is he can actually rush the passer. Um, and it's not necessarily something you always get with defensive tackles. You know, there are a lot of different types of defensive tackles in the world of college football. He is a guy that can absolutely get after the quarterback and do it not, you know, doing bull rushes or pushing the offensive lineman back into the quarterback, but he can throw guys to the side and just keep it moving. He had five sacks a year ago, which is pretty insane from the defensive tackle uh, position and uh, a team in Texas that didn't have a ton of sacks. So he was a big part of their pass rush, um, had a couple of pressures in that playoff game against Michael Penix, but Penix was just on another level and sidestepped him and threw a dart. So there are tons to like about this kid. Um, I think his numbers this week will be pretty incredible to see roll in. I think his 40-yard dash will be particularly interesting because I think he can move. I just don't know where he will fall in the in the defensive tackle ranks, but he could very easily be number one. Um, but I think a lot of what these teams have wanted to see has already been on tape, right? Um, with a lot of these kids, when you're going into the draft, especially when you're at the top of your position, uh, pretty much consensusly like Byron Murphy is, there's not a lot to show necessarily, um, at least on the field in the combine, but there's a ton of questions to be answered in the interviews and things of that nature because that's where a lot of this is decided, right? You have to know if the kid fits your culture in a lot of different ways. Um, Daniel Jeremiah currently has him 16th overall to the Seahawks, um, but I've seen him jump into the top 10 a little bit, so tons could happen this week in terms of where he gets drafted um but at the end of the day I think he's your defensive tackle one and I think barring injury I think there would be very little that would keep him from being in that position and being drafted in the first round and probably pretty early on in the first round um but another defensive tackle that might be a little bit off the radar here is Tyler Davis um and I like him a lot because he has played so much football <laughs> um he played Five years of high-level college football, obviously, at Clemson, um, never a bad thing. Obviously, you know, you want them to be able to jump into the league after their third year and be as young as possible and all these different things. But at the end of the day, playing more football is not a bad thing. Being a smarter football player is never a bad thing. And Tyler Davis is absolutely that. Um, super forceful at the point of attack, has super strong hands, is a great space eater um, in the run game because... He can push the offensive line off their block, off their line of scrimmage. Essentially, he can win the line of scrimmage and blow up run holes with essentially no uh, no break, no question of um, you know no time for the running back to find a hole and, and cut through it. He would just absolutely blow it up way faster than people would think and he is way faster than people would think he can actually actually kind of fly and it'll be interesting to see what that 40 time comes in at but um I think he'll fall somewhere in the second round could be a little bit lower depending on the way he tests and the big question mark for him is he does have a little bit of an injury history uh he missed multiple games in three of his five years at Clemson now none of those were overly uh intense injuries none of those kept him out for long periods of time 
but definitely something that teams will be watching for, absolutely, because it's something you have to worry about. So I think the next couple of days will be very embarrassing for him because you get to show who you are and the, the smarts you have for college football or fo- football in general in those interviews. And then once you get on the field, you get to show that you're fully healthy. Um, and that's really the important thing. Um, but then we'll get to the linebackers here, and we'll start with another Clemson guy, Jeremiah Trotter. Pretty much a copy and paste of Tyler Davis. Super experienced, super smart, a little bit more physically gifted in a lot of ways because the dude can fly. Um, has sideline to sideline speed, is a great middle linebacker, very, very good uh, tackler, does a great job in the run game. He had 87 tackles a year ago, 89 the year before that, had five five and a half sacks, two picks, two forced fumbles a year ago. So the dude does a number of really a number of different things really, really well. Um, he's probably somewhere in the second round now, but as we know, there's a huge difference between the 33rd pick and the sec- uh, 64th pick um, in the second round. So he will absolutely be fighting for any position that he can get. Um, this dude is super talented, super smart. I think he will impress tons of teams in his interview because you could throw any football situation at him, and I'm sure he has seen it. So... He is definitely someone I'm keeping my eye out on. One of the best linebackers in this class, uh, rated by a lot of people. And I got to imagine he's just going to be awesome to talk to and pick his brain about football in general. Um, But then we'll get to a linebacker that might be a little bit off your radar. Uh, He was on the freaks list by Bruce Feldman over at CBS. Uh, Trevin Wallace, linebacker from Kentucky. This dude is an absolute athlete. Uh, He's a little bit more of an off-ball linebacker, so playing a little bit outside of the box next to a really good middle linebacker, which is I where I think he would really fit, uh, whether that's, you know, Levante David down in Tampa Bay or Fred Warner out in San Francisco. I think there's a number of really good uh, middle linebackers in the NFL that you could put him next to and just let him go be an athlete all over the field um, because this dude, sideline to sideline, can do a number of different things. 80 tackles a year ago, five and a half sacks, two turnovers, a pick and a fumble. Um did a number of things really well for Kentucky a year ago, but was next to a very good uh, middle linebacker. So it helps him a lot when you have that stabilizing force uh, next to him. And I think he's someone that is going to light the world on fire in his interviews because he is so high energy. You can tell every time he steps on the field, he just loves football. Um, But also he does so many things incredibly well. He's incredibly fast plays really, really well in coverage, which is not a normal thing a lot of the times for linebackers coming into the league. Um, It's usually a little bit of a learning curve there, but he is already at the point where you can put him in coverage against a running back or a slot receiver, and he'll hold up just fine. So he is someone that I think could really, really help his draft stock going through some of the drills that he'll go through, showing his athletic ability and showing Overall, just his love for the game because it absolutely jumps off the screen every time that you watch him. Um, But that will bring us to an end to the first of this uh, Combine Watch List uh, preview session that I'm going to have throughout the week. We'll follow it up tomorrow with some DBs and tight ends. A little bit different of groups there, but uh, it'll be fun to get into some different um, players. Obviously, Brock Bowers kind of setting the pace for tight ends over there in the Combine this week, but Still tons of guys to talk about, so very excited to go over that tomorrow. Um, But we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the top 10 returning quarterbacks in college football. A lot of contention in this topic, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure I will get a lot of people that do not agree with me, but I'm more than fine with that. We'll have a great time with all of this. So uh, we'll take a short break, and we will be right back.